What is up everyone, my name is Michael Pohl with BayAreaAquatics.com and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make these spawning mops to breed fish in. So I know a lot of people don't exactly know what these spawning mops are. I had a lot of questions about them uh, when I did my fish room tour of Larry and Mary Shankles. Uh, fish breeding house thing. Um, they have these all over the place because they breed a lot of rainbow fish, which are egg scatters, and you know these are really handy for that. Now there's a couple perks over using something like this over using live plants. One, this is a lot easier to pick up out of the tank and move it and drop it. Um, you can see it, the eggs stick really well to it, um, and they're easy to kind of pull out, check, and then put back in. So definitely a couple of perks there. They also don't require much light, so if you keep your tank super dark or you're breeding in a, a not super plant lit area, which, you know, that can be expensive, um, these drop in, they don't require light, not a big deal. It can help keep your algae down if you're not lighting the tanks like that. The other thing is they're just easier to get a hold of. Um, you know, I have trouble getting java moss sometimes. I know other people that never can have enough java moss. They buy it whenever they can. And these, you can make pretty much as many as you want when you want using stuff you find either around your house or at Walmart or Target or Michaels or wherever else. These are also mainly used for egg bear, egg laying fish, um, but I've also seen people use them for live bears and guppies and platies and things like that because they can still go in here and still hide from the fry. Um, they just tend to throw a lot more of them in versus um, just one or two for the egg people. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and talk about how you actually make a spawning mop. The first thing you're gonna need is some yarn. Now, I prefer synthetic. Uh, I have acrylic there, I've seen polyester, things like that, um, because you're not dealing with the natural fibers decomposing at all, and you're not dealing with any of the artificial dyes. Um, so when you, you know, you don't have to necessarily boil it beforehand, you can just kind of throw it in the tank and you don't have to worry about it. Next, you're gonna want something that either a, you can clamp a clamp onto the edge, which I wouldn't really recommend. Some people like to do that. Um, but most people use something that floats. I've seen the common way is cork. Um, so like a wine cork thing. I, I pick up a 10 pack of them at Michael's for like two, three bucks. Um, some people use ping pong balls. I've seen that. Um, they're just, you know, ping pong balls. I've seen other people use like polystyrene or styrofoam. I'm not a huge fan of that just because that stuff breaks up and it's kind of like, you know, it can get messy. Um, but you know, whatever you've got on hand, if you need one, it's not that big of a deal. It's, it's pretty easy to find something that can float or something that you can just clamp it to the edge of the tank with. You're also gonna need a pair of scissors, um, something just that can cut yarn, uh, nothing too crazy, and then something to wrap your yarn around. And I'll explain that a little more in a minute. I like to use a spiral notebook because my breeding tanks are 10 gallons and I find that the long way of a, of a spiral notebook is the perfect length for a uh, spawn mop so that it's like the perfect height in the tank. Some people use cardboard to make a template. Some people I've seen even like take a piece of plywood because they make them so often and they sand the edges super nice and they've just got it so they can sit there and crank them out. Um, like I said, I use a spiral notebook. Some people use a hardcover notebook. I like to have a little bit of flex so it's easier to get the stuff off. Um, but other than that, it, it really doesn't matter. In reality, you can do it around your fingers. It's just it's only gonna be like this tall of a spawning mop and you, you know, you usually want something a little bigger. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and wrap your yarn around whatever object you're using uh, 50 to 100 times usually or kind of wherever you want. Um, you can make them as thin, you can make them as thick, however you want. Um, but I found the couple of ones that I made, I, I was like right at like 60, 70 ish turns um, and I really liked them and most other people say they go somewhere around 100. Um, so that's just kind of, the rough number, just kind of go until you, you know, get one that you like. And if you don't like it, you can always make another one because they're pretty cheap. Next, you're gonna take a small piece of yarn and tie it around at the top part of your uh, book cover holder thingy um, to kind of make it, you know, stay together as one. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is cut the yarn at the opposite side of the knot. I like to take my, uh, my yarn off of like the notebook for it. Some people don't, some people leave it on and they cut it on the notebook, it's kind of up to you. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and wrap whatever floating device you're using, whether it's styrofoam or cork or ping pong balls or whatever, around the top where the knot that you just tied is. Last, you're gonna need another little piece of yarn and then you're just gonna tie really tight around that piece of uh, floating device so that your spawning mop has that little floating thing and it won't let it get out. And that's pretty much it. These things are super, super simple, super cheap to use. Um, you know, they're really like, just kind of basic, nice Java moss replacements type of deal. And uh, yeah. So let me know in the comments how you make your spawning mops, if you use something similar, what type of floating stuff you use. Like I said, I think cork is kind of the main one that most people use, but I've seen all sorts of stuff. 
Um, so yeah, just let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.